Thank you, Keith, for joining us on your final days in office here. I want to start with the economic outlook and the impact of trade. Dow down something like 400 points at one point today. Investors clearly worried that trade tensions are weighing on the long-term outlook. Do you share those concerns? Uh, absolutely. And of course, the real impact depends on how permanent they are. If they're temporary, that's better than if they're not. But even in the short run, it can have a, um, a noticeable impact. And how big of an impact are you expecting? We certainly expect, if they continue for a while, that there to be a drag on growth. This is sort of uh, tariffs or taxes. Taxes slow down, uh, slow down the economy, and that's sort of how this is working. Then you have, of course, the other side where you have retaliation. That's also another uh, sort of anti-stimulus on the economy. And you guys are already projecting that growth this year will be lower than it was last year. You're already projecting that growth will not even hit 2 percent over the next few years. So this 3 percent idea of hitting that long-term economic growth of 3 percent, is that unachievable? Uh, we, just don't, we just don't see that. Right now, we're working through a lot of stimulus from the tax cuts, from increased spending, and that's going to be wearing out here in a year or two. And then we're going to run into supply-side constraints, where we have a, a labor force can only grow so, so fast, productivity can only grow so fast. So we really do think there's going to be a slowdown to something like under 2 percent uh, in a couple of years. When you think about the impact of the trade war, you said a lot of it depends on how permanent some of these measures are. Uh, do you think that the recent escalation that we've seen, the imposition of tariffs up to 25 percent, perhaps tariffing everything that we import from China, is that action already changing your forecast for the coming years? I think that's quite likely. I think if, if those really do continue, then we, we probably – we even make a point probably this, this summer to redo our forecast – and probably down, downgraded a little bit. With the new baseline. That's right. With the trade policy intact. In I also want to talk about something else you guys have been warning a lot about, which is uh, America's fiscal situation. You guys have been very consistent in saying that uh, spending is on an unsustainable course. No one in Washington appears to want to address this. Are we in a crisis mode just yet? We're not, and I I'm sure that's part of why nothing's happened yet. You know, we we've been saying We've been saying for a decade straight that the, the current trend is unsustainable. The levels are getting very, very high. Right now, we're in a position that's really unprecedented. We're in a, a time where economic growth is very, very strong, yet deficits are very high. And that's, never, that's really never happened before. Last year, we had, we had almost 3 percent growth. And the deficit was about $800 billion. And some people would say, though, that that's an indication that maybe debt and deficits don't matter in the same way that they used to. Do you agree with that? Uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, they, they do matter. We do think that as time goes on, deficits are going to raise interest rates and, and have an impact on investment and slow down growth. When you look at some of the proposals that... Democratic lawmakers, others have put out there for sweeping expansion of the social safety net. Is that something that America can afford? Well, it's like almost like anything else. If Congress wants to spend money, if they want, want to give tax breaks, they need to think about how to pay for it. Paying for it by just borrowing is, is continuing the problem. One of the issues that is also before Congress is the debt limit. So Congress has already authorized uh, a lot of spending, and the question is now, are they going to be able to pay for commitments they've already made, bills they've committed to pay? What would happen if Congress does not raise the debt ceiling or if the administration does not agree to sign on to a debt ceiling increase? Well, they've probably got some leeway. Even, even past the deadline, uh, Congress, uh, Treasury will be selective with who they pay and et cetera. You just don't want it to go on long enough that it affects credit markets. Or How long do we have? It's, it's not clear, because we've never let it go too far. We do probably have some time, but it, it's probably still not an urgent thing. And final question for you, any advice for your successor, Phil Swagel? Uh, I think CBO is a, is a great organization, and it's fearless and, uh, in providing the best information they can, and I, I, I advise him to keep CBO fearless.